Hello, and welcome to the Providence College Podcast. I am Chris Judge. You've probably heard my name as the producer of the podcast from day one, and my voice with an occasional introduction. But today, I am making my hosting debut, and we'll see how this goes. And if I'll be back in front of the mic in the future. Uh, So let's get started. I'm here today with PC sophomore Patrick Callahan. He's part of a team that has created an app that you can download today in your phone's app store. The app is called Peck App, and we will get into those details shortly. Patrick, welcome to the PC Podcast. Thanks for having me, Chris. I'm excited. I want to start by getting to know you a little bit better uh, before we get into the reason you're here about the app. So uh, you're from the suburbs of Chicago. What brought you here to Friartown? Um, My parents definitely pushed me out east. My mom's from Long Island, and both my parents met at Fordham. Um, So they definitely wanted me to come out and get the East Coast experience with college, small Catholic university. Um, My older brother goes to Boston College, too, so we only really kind of looked out here. What else drew you to PC? Was it the, uh, like, what you could study, uh, the athletics? What what brought you to here specifically compared to every other uh, liberal arts school here on the East Coast? I think when I was touring here, I saw that everything was kind of up and coming and new. The business school was basically brand new. I think they just finished a science building. The gym wasn't brand new, but it was pretty updated, and everyone knows it's pretty great. Um, And then on top of that, I just kind of like the feel of the students. I come from a family of four brothers, so it's five boys. It's basically like a little fraternity at our house. Um, And I definitely liked the feeling I got here where, like, everyone kind of knew each other. Everyone was friendly all the time, um, which I didn't really feel at a lot of other schools that uh, I toured out here. What are you studying, and uh, what brought you to that? Um, when I came in, I was actually a finance major, and this past semester, I switched to marketing. Um, probably a lot to do with the experience that I've had working on this app um, and just finding a kind of a newfound interest for that. So now that you brought up the app, let's... Uh let's basically figure out what it does it's called peck app basically you had this come out of an experience you had at a conference me and my former roommate nick talamary who's now attends vanderbilt um we joined the entrepreneurship club here at school and in the first couple weeks of school they took a little excursion to um, mass challenge which is a tech startup um kind of competition in boston in uh the new england area and we went there with a group of seniors and then a couple other kids who were in the club. Um, and we basically got to go there, talk to the startups before they did the competition and the award ceremony, um, meet with people who were coming up with some ideas. That some of you'd be like, all right, I don't know why you're doing this. And then others are like, wow, that's really, really cool that you're doing that. And um, just a lot of really impressive people there. But before we could actually go out and talk to everyone, we had to exchange our information with our group leaders and we kind of showed up late already. There was like 45 minutes before we had to go into the auditorium um, and stop meeting with the the founders of the startups. But um, it took us 15 minutes to actually exchange and create a group chat with our group leaders. And we didn't really think much about that. We we're just like, dang it, like now we gotta go talk to people really quick so that we can get into the auditorium for the awards. But naturally we were pretty inspired afterward to start something because we have tons of downtime in school and we, both of us, Nick and I, have pretty like we like to think creative minds. So we were like, let's do something. And then we thought back to that moment where we were exchange, trying to exchange contact information, and it took us way too long, and it sacrificed um, opportunity that we had to talk with the other startups. So you decided we needed a solution for this. Uh, you're not a computer science major. I don't know if Nick is a computer science major. Uh, how? Where did you? find someone you thought could turn this idea into a reality so after we kind of fully formulated the idea i thought about a a high school friend from um from st ignatius in chicago who i'd known had been a programmer and developer for eight years at the time even though we were only 18 he started picking up coding when he was 10 when his brother dropped the college course and he picked it up and finished it um so he created like probably eight or nine apps before we even reached out to him and I I wasn't going to push it on him I was more so asking for like if we were going to do this like how would we do it I was like don't worry like we're not trying to ask you to make us an app right now Um, we're just trying to figure out the process if if we did start doing it how much would it cost how long would it take but after talking to him about that for a little bit 
and probably a month went by when we hadn't yet asked him to work with us, he said, actually, I'd kind of like to join up with you guys because I really like the idea. I'll make your guys after you, and we'll split it up three ways. So uh, so it's the three of you now. What are each everyone's responsibilities? Obviously, Zach is the, the coder and the, and the designer of the app. So what, uh, what do you guys do to divvy up uh, the duties of, of trying to develop a, a company and, and this app in turn? And that's definitely a place where we've grown a lot because Nick and I were both finance majors and had similar backgrounds. So Zach had a pretty obvious role as just the developer. Um, whatever we agreed upon and handed over to him, he just got to work right away. Um, but while he was working, we had to make sure we were doing something. So then we did have to probably multiple different stages of actually separating power between me and Nick and job. Now more so Nick is going to handle the marketing sector um, and I'm going to start taking over more maybe possible strategic strategic partnerships, keeping in touch with all the people we've been talking to already and making sure we keep those relationships strong and then just organizing and helping uh, the whole team communicate because now we're dealing with people who aren't just in our immediate team. Um, so it can get kind of jumbled if there's so many pieces to the puzzle. So I kind of hold that together. So kind of project management. So you mentioned other members. How how has the team grown? Uh, how have you kind of expanded to uh, to help grow this this thing? Um, so one of the areas we really needed help with was one our marketing because we have no experience doing that. So this summer with eighteen at eighteen seventy one, which is a Chicago tech incubator, um, we were lucky enough to get admitted into their um, workspace. And during mentor hours with um with just some marketing mentors. We were just like, we're gonna get here, meet as many people as possible, talk to whoever will talk to us. That's why we're here, we have three months this summer, let's get the most out of it. In our first meeting, we met with um, Mike Altier from A-Light Solutions, which is a HR outsourcing firm. They're owned by Blackstone, but they have a marketing department at 1871 that specifically helps startups. So he was our mentor for that meeting. And then he offered us to go through us a um, branding accelerator with his whole team it was like 10 of them and we did a day long branding accelerator and then afterward um, we kind of agreed that they would take us on as their pet project and do some free marketing research for us and then ultimately use us as a case study for their future um, deals because they do work with bigger companies like they just did a huge deal with um, Adidas and there's some pretty cool people on the team so what what is a day long branding workshop consist of I'll try to remember most of it, but um, it was kind of just throw spaghetti at the wall and see what sticks. We walked in there. It was gonna. It was planned to be four hours long, and they were like, "All right, we got to start with target audience." Um, they had everyone pull out note cards. There's probably ten of us in the room, and just write down like who we each think our target demographic is, um, because they talked about separating your your target market into different. They call it tranches, where it was kind of like the European military where they'd say, all right, these people you're not going to get no matter what, like they're going to, they're going to pass away. Um, so we're not going to send our mil our medical aid to them. Here's the people that we might get if we do a good job and work hard, but we're not necessarily sure they can go either way. And then here's the people we can definitely get. And we're going to focus really hard on those people versus the people who we definitely will never get. So we just put post notes on the wall. And then at the end of it, we kind of summed it up like, all right, what's the feel for our type of person? Are they social? Are they emotional are they um young are they old just kind of all categories like that and really kind of nail it down to people between the ages of like 18 24 using social media a lot meeting a lot of new people all the time and then past that we were like all right what do we want our brand identity to be we don't want to just be an app we want to be like a social community and like when you're using pack you're out there meeting people it's a feeling it's not just an app and a tool on your phone but then after that workshop, we continued talking with them, and they would send us like a marketing budget and uh, and a couple of packages. I think the the name is uh, kind of self explanatory, but if you can tell me how you guys got to it and uh, what the really what the meaning behind it was when mm -hmm. you when you came up with it. So the first version of the app was the idea was that all right, let's have all of our group members here trying to exchange information. It'd be awesome if we can bump our phones into each other. And once we thought about that, we looked up like, all right, has this been done before? Bumping phones to change, exchange information. We found out it had been done in 2010 through like 2013. 
with the company that eventually got acquired by Google, and they they grew their their app from like zero to I think two hundred million users in like th- three or f- four years. Um, and we were like, all right, well, we wanted to call it Bump because that was the initial idea. Like, all right, you bump your phones together, let's just call it Bump. They had that, and that, but theirs wasn't just contact information. Theirs was files, photos, basically whatever you want to send. But Google kind of acquired them for the team more so than the actual app itself. But then we're like, all right, we can't do bump. Uh, what about peck? Because you're kind of pecking phones. It's a verb. Like, do you want to peck? We, we could see that kind of catching a lot. But now that we don't have the function where you bump phones, it kind of just stuck. But we still do like that the name is also a verb. And it can kind of go with our, our logo, which is kind of bird-like. <laughs> Did you have any failed names that you'd be willing to admit? Bump. No, that was it. Was, wow. Was probably That's good. Probably it, yeah. So then we trademarked Peck App this summer, which was which is pretty cool. So you mentioned it, uh, this incubator in Chicago called 1871. Can you give the listeners a little bit more background on how you got in, what that process was? and a little more on how they helped you outside of what we talked about with the marketing and stuff. Mm-hmm. So I kind of think of it like a startup gym. They do have accelerated programs within it. We were not in one of them. Like Techstars has an office there and they take companies through. I think it was started in like 2013 because Chicago kept losing a bunch of entrepreneurs out to Silicon Valley. Um, and they're like, why Why are we doing that? Like we can, we have so much talent here. People have great ideas. Let's, let's bring it to Chicago, bring business to Chicago. So the mayor helped organize that too. So what the place is, is a co-working spot. I think it's, they've expanded three times now. So now it's a huge facility in downtown Chicago in the merchandise market. And it's kind of a make what you can of it. So they give you access to mentors who are mostly local business owners in Chicago, some entrepreneurs, others just lawyers, people who can help you with your taxes, um, intellectual property lawyers, just kind of all areas of, of business in Chicago who just want to help and kind of give back to the community. Um, they give you their contact information. They set you up with office hours at 1871, or you can meet with them anywhere else. You don't have to, but then you can also go there and just kind of have a quiet space, like almost like a library to just do your work. But w- while we were there, we were like, all right, we're going to meet with as many people as possible, throw this at whoever is willing to see it. And then on top of that, they offer different courses. So on most Tuesdays and Thursdays they'll have they'll have like a digital marketing course or they'll have financial modeling course or maybe just a speaker to come in and talk about how he got his startup off the ground and that's a great way to one gather with other founders talk to them about their ideas kind of critique each other and then ultimately take notes and just kind of sit back and listen because there's probably something in each meeting that you can take out so you started the app uh, last year and had version 2.0 come out over the summer And by the time this podcast drops, we're going to be at version 3.0. Can you tell us how the app works, what the actual mechanics are of using it, and and what the features are, and and why, if I'm a listener of this podcast, why I should be going to my app store while I'm listening right now and download the app? Pack App is a mobile contact sharing app based off the idea that people don't want to just share their phone number anymore because they communicate through so many other mediums, Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. LinkedIn. You even need someone's information to Venmo them. And especially at our age where everyone's meeting new people all the time, kind of connecting sporadically over a couple of different platforms. Like you'll add someone on Instagram and then maybe like a month later add them on Snapchat or you'll get their phone number, but you won't know how to email them because you didn't really care to ask for that. We kind of give you act or freedom to share exactly what you want, when you want, with who you want. And now with Peck App 3.0, it's through a, a QR code that is generated each time you select what you want to share and people around you don't even need to have the app if you have peck app on your phone it's great if you both have it because then you can um add people right to your pet contacts and it's quicker to add them on snapchat twitter instagram whatever but that was a major flaw we had with our other versions was in order for this app to get off the ground and for it to actually be useful to people everyone around them has to have it and now we've kind of opened it up to where it's useful to you even if the others around you don't have it it'll be more useful to them if they do but um it's still worth your time to go out and get it because it will save you time headaches and organizational problems and it's not just for people your age when i someone my age and, and co-workers of mine when we go to conferences 
we'll walk out with a stack of business cards. And what are we going to do with a stack of business cards? Very rarely do you go through them and make sure you enter all that information into your phone for each person. But with this, if someone just needed to take a picture of the QR code on my phone or, or put their camera app to the QR code on my phone and instantly have all that information, that's a better way to be able to get in contact with people down the line than where I misplaced the stack of business cards I got 100%. at a conference. And with this current version, you can also create a custom URL that will take people to your public profile, whatever you're okay with sharing publicly. So let's say you're a small business and you wanna share your LinkedIn, your Facebook page, your company website, and the phone number to contact you. Um, you can do that on your Instagram page now or you can do that on your Facebook page with our custom URL. So what, what do you see as the goals of Pack App um, going forward over the next two years um, while you're here? Next two years is a big question. I mean, we'd rather we'd love to focus more on further customization of being able to share um, your online presence. We have some ideas for that that we don't really want to share yet. But um, Fair. Further customization of how you want your online self to be presented when you first meet someone. What else do you do on campus? What, uh, what clubs, hobbies, intramurals? What, what keeps you busy when you're not working on, on the app and, and doing school? I do a lot of reading. Um, I'm kind of, like a, I guess, productive psycho. So like, <laughs> if I'm sitting still for too long, I, I get like antsy or something, but I can sit still and read. So like freshman year, I kind of started picking up books and just reading during my free time. And it kind of, you get better as you go. Um, you start being able to comprehend more, reading faster, so I've kind of become a nerd in that category. I've been involved with the entrepreneurship club here. Last year, I wasn't so much. We were just kind of going hardcore at Peck App, and it was kind of a weaker program last year. It kind of seemed like the seniors were just signing it off um, as an extracurricular. But this year, it's been awesome. Um, John Valvo has basically revived it. It's the, now the biggest club on campus, I think. So I go to their meetings, I've been, and John's been talking with me to try to help get me on the board because... I've been kind of networking here in the startup community so I could help bring people in to talk. And I do do intramural sports with just with my buddies. But besides that, I'm doing homework. I don't watch enough TV. I should probably watch some more yeah. um, and, and reading a lot. So uh, let's talk more about the Entrepreneurship Club. You said it's, it's really started to ramp up this year. So what what are they doing? What uh, Are they bringing speakers to campus? Are they putting together events? What, what's going on? Yeah, so for the most part, it's, it's just guest speakers. Last year, they they almost tried to do too much where they're like, all right, we're going to do the, the, uh, this thing where everyone comes up with a business idea and we're going to try to pitch it um, to each other. And then after the mass challenge trip, there wasn't really any meetings and nothing was really going on. I think they had Rich Gotham come in, who's an alumni, and, and give one speech. But besides that, it kind of fell dead. But then this year, John has done a great job bringing in speakers like at least every other week. And every room he's brought people into has been full for the most part it's alumni not always like full-blown entrepreneurs like just more so business owners um they're not necessarily going out there and creating mobile apps but they'll they started their own bank or something and they'll walk you through that process and then i'm i just helped bring in adam alpert who went to brown university he'll be talking to the finance club too i think but um he started an app called pangea app which is a a mobile app for students to find freelance work with startups because he's basically saying there's so much talent in colleges why aren't they why isn't that talent being put to use and then these kids can add that onto their resumes working with these companies so he's he's been a big presence in providence and he's coming in but yeah everyone should go and get out there to the entrepreneurship club pat thanks for coming on the podcast i uh, wish you luck as you go forward here uh at pc and and with your app awesome thanks man and uh, don't forget, you can download the Peck app in the Android and Apple app stores. And make sure you tell your friends to download it as well so it's easier to share your contacts with other people when you meet them. Thanks for listening to this week's episode of the PC Podcast. Please rate, review, and subscribe to the podcast wherever you listen. And share with others inside and outside of the Friar family. Thanks for listening.